community level supports and opportunities that are provided. Yeah. Also, more systemic policy level ones, so maybe whether it's student loans or student grants, mm -hmm. bursaries that are provided through maybe the school or communities. The sports programs. Yeah, yeah, sports programs to play sports. Um, and then we also brought in these equity cards, right? And the reason we brought some of these equity cards in was to show some concrete examples of, of where something can make a significant yeah. difference. Um, so you saw in uh, the example of the single parent family by adding in uh, increased Canada child tax benefit, we were now able to afford a basic nutritious mm -hmm. diet. So it can be those types of things that lift a person enough up mm -hmm. and support them mm -hmm. to then maybe um, succeed, to have enough food to learn in school, mm -hmm. right, and to, and to go on to succeed in life. But when there are so many barriers that are kind of put in your place, that, that maybe makes it more difficult. The senior women is that they're often not the drivers. Right. So it's usually the husband that was the driver. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it becomes a big issue around getting to appointments and mm -hmm. you know getting access to, uh, yeah. So yeah. they need often need somebody in the community to drive them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It contributes yeah. to that social isolation mm -hmm. too sometimes yeah. that you see. I know in our community over the last six or eight years we constructed two seniors housing mm -hmm. complexes and primarily widow mm -hmm. widows that uh you know and most i would say don't drive but there's a few in the homes that do so they become sort of the the, the transportation link mm -hmm. for the rest and uh, it's been a wonderful story in that mm -hmm. these people can stay in our community that want to stay in the community and uh, give them an opportunity to have a social network within that group. There's six to two each unit uh, mm -hmm. complexes tied together so they come together for a variety of functions and mm -hmm. it's a huge thing to to uh, I think it keeps family closer but not every community has that luxury you know and and we need to continue to think about affordable housing options for people and where you best position them and how you, how you can enhance that lifestyle for for a senior that you know mm -hmm. maybe three or four get together and they have some common meals and that helps right bring the overall cost mm -hmm. down as well as the social aspect because people get lonely mm -hmm. when they're when they're alone and so then they quit making meals they just say uh, I'll go without dinner and yeah. it just the kind of the spirals down downward so mm -hmm. what's rattling through my mind is that we kind of focused on food insecurity and it's mm -hmm. certainly a, a challenge but it doesn't stand alone because it tends to go hand in hand with you know, a number of other you know we can call them determinants of of health. Mm -hmm. Now, on a weekly basis, she knows when it's coming. Yep. Uh, she's predictability. Sticking, it's predictability. predictability. Mm -hmm. she, <laughs> she has <laughs> said the, the group on the bus, all of a sudden it's a friendship thing yeah. and there's it's lots of talk. It, it's huge, right? Yeah. And now we look yeah. at the ridership yeah. has, has jumped significantly mm -hmm. in the last mm -hmm. uh, six months, which is great because, you know, you help support uh, like community transit, and you wonder, are you putting your money in the right place? Will people use it? And mm -hmm. it was slow getting going, but there's more and more ridership, which is critical to yeah. uh, keeping people, Sustained. yeah, in their homes longer mm -hmm. and giving them that little little support that they need. Yeah. That one thing, you know, that every week, you know, on Thursday, the bus mm -hmm. is coming through, and yeah. you can get to town, and you yeah. can go to your doctor's appointment, you can get up to this uh, grocery store, you yeah. can make your way to the coffee shop if you yeah. wish to have a yeah. chat with a few friends, and then at three o'clock, get back home. It takes it or shakes the confidence of, of people, right? Mm -hmm. They lose confidence, uh, they have a lot of good ideas, but they don't have the confidence to go forward. Mm -hmm. They're just, they're kind of held down, and, and so if, if it's a systemic thing that maybe is mm -hmm. generational, and they don't have that support, it's, it's how do we not just provide the money to get them uh, uh, better, better food and better conditions, but how do we provide those other intangibles that'll help prop them up and give them confidence and get them out there, whether it's a kid coming to a ball, ball game and they don't have a ball glove or they don't want to go because they don't have a ball. So how do we reach out? As a whole, we need to try to create a better minimum standard of living for people. How do, how do we get there? I mean, obviously, it, it goes across all demographics. You know, what, what our brains need is to find common predictability. And when you have a chaotic situation that's happening, so if you're a young mother who's trying to support three young children and you're trying to hold it together, sometimes that creates a lot of chaos uh, emotionally and physically. So it's one of the reasons why you start to see these habits and behaviors like smoking. So what it does, it gives them that calm, but eventually it starts to create more chaos. 
So a lot of times it's, it's really about how we create some stability and predictability for some of these, these individuals. And it's something like 40% of the services that we provide in healthcare in Canada are actually n are privatized. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't realize that. So, you know, it's a lot of the healthcare s services that are provided. So, you know, things around um, dentistry or mm -hmm. prescriptions, you know, things like that. So you're making choices there. Mm -hmm. So it, um, I see, I see, you know, you see things around, I, I'd say the, probably the biggest barrier around health is nutrition, generally mm -hmm. for me. Mm -hmm. You know, when you see, uh, you see a two liter bottle of milk cost more than a two liter bottle of Pepsi, you know, and people will come in and I've seen kids come in with, you know, baby bottles with Pepsi in them. Mm -hmm. You know, and you're looking at their teeth and you're thinking, oh my goodness, you know. Dental infections are definitely really treatable, very mm -hmm. manageable, but you have to have a tooth dealt with. Yeah. And so we've had situations where, because they can't afford to deal with it, they end up getting some of the serious complications, mm -hmm. which are, you know, abscesses that can affect yeah. their airways and things yeah. like that. So I've had patients who have actually gone for surgery. Yeah. Yeah, because they w were not able to, to have that tooth dealt mm -hmm. with. But I always ask them, are you able to afford the medication? Because mm -hmm. sometimes, and I think it's really important that we instruct patients to do that, because a physician will write a prescription but it may be very expensive for that patient unless you ask. The urban, urban rural divide where we're losing our youth, you know, it's just too easy for them to pick up and move somewhere else where they don't have the transportation challenges that people in the county have. And, and it's easier to pick up unskilled labor and work and whatnot. Uh, so uh, if uh, they weren't battling, you know, the food insecurity, problems at home, they'd be more inclined to, to, to stay with the family. I don't think it's good for the social fabric to, when you have a family that's worried about putting food on the table, that creates all kinds of other tensions. But primarily made up of a lot of small farms over the years. Mm -hmm. Everyone grew up, they, they had a garden, they had all those things, but as the decline in the income happened, people move away. If there was mm -hmm. some way we could kind of get that level back up and, and start to encourage people to go back to that. And we're seeing a move. Mm -hmm. We are seeing more people moving out into the country and mm -hmm. starting to create little hobby farms, but they've probably gone somewhere else to make some money. So if we could get the people that are struggling, get them up to a certain level, then they see the benefit and they'll start to do that. And then, you know, I think our community will become much more vibrant. And mm -hmm. I think from a support and supporting each other. I think our community would start to support each other much better. I mean, we just drive around the, the rural areas and you know, fields are growing up in weeds, the buildings are falling down. We somehow need to change that, And but it takes jobs, right? And, and But not everybody's gonna make us 70 or $80,000 a year, so we need to find a way, so it's a combination of maybe a little lesser job, but if they have opportunities to, mm -hmm. to do things, we need the, it's not an easy, it's not easy, but mm -hmm. we need to work on that because I think culturally it's better for our whole community. When I look at this young mother who's working really hard and, and I'm thinking she's just barely doing it and you know, she's, she's, she's doing it at a cost. Her kids can't mm -hmm. see it right now, but you know, but right now their kids just see their mom not there, mm -hmm. you know. So how can we as a community support that, that mother who really wants to make a difference and she wants to, and she's a great example for her kids mm -hmm. you know and uh, so you know it's it's how we kind of we can bring these uh, individuals to a level that they are supported because mm -hmm. uh, right now I mean she's just barely getting through but we have to believe that they're doing the best they can at yeah. the moment. With, with the resources you know, they so have well even the resources or even the skill sets that yeah. they have so you know the philosophy is is that when we know better we do better but mm -hmm. everyone no matter what whatever whatever we feel when we stand back and look and feel that they should be doing that differently that person is doing the best they mm -hmm. can at that moment mm -hmm. with what they understand what they know what they've learned mm -hmm. so it, you know it may or may not be our job but our job is to support them to whatever that place is mm -hmm. you know where they can get to a better place where they want to go you know mm -hmm. are, are the choices they making are getting them where they want to be mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How can we support those yeah. those yeah. those choices in getting you where you want to be? Yeah. Yeah. Part of the game is designed is to help us wrap our head around if we're not in that situation, um, what that actually looks like for people, or the 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 feeling of um, the notice comes home about the school field trip and it costs twenty dollars, 
and that feeling you get in your gut of, oh boy, you know, and you mentioned that thing about your mom choosing the, the more stylish glasses because you guys wanted them, and on a logical level, that doesn't make sense, but when you're looking at the, your kids, mm-hmm. and they <laughs> say, those are hideous, they're not stylish, I don't want to wear them, I'm going to stick out like a sore thumb, and I'm going to be made fun of, you find a way to do mm-hmm. it, or you look at, you know, it's a particular holiday, and I want to be able to provide the typical celebra- celebration that everybody provides, and, and how, how difficult that is when you can't do it, so... It definitely is a, a big element of it. There's, there's, there's not often a lot of choice. So we think choices are being made, but mm-hmm. it's often being kind of forced upon people um, with what's around them in yeah. their environment. So there definitely is a, that big role to play of, you know, how that transit makes such, I think has made such a big difference Huge for a lot difference. of people. I've talked mm-hmm. to you know, a number of people. Yeah, to be able to get where they need to go and pay much less um, than they would have before and, and feel secure and reliable and, and you know, what a what a boost that has been. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I talked to one lady, she, she's just thrilled with the transit.